Hey guys, I just landed in Dallas, Texas here to visit some family and to pick up my new data science laptop. All right, so let's say you want to buy a laptop for analytics uh, of some kind, right? What laptop should you get? Long story short, I don't think it really matters all that much. And the reason I say that is the demands of most analytics tasks aren't too high. You'll usually be like querying or uh, going through data with a couple million rows or something in it, not, nothing too bad. Now, in the instances where you have a massive amount of data you have to go through, or you need a GPU, say for like neural networks or something like that, if you're training really complicated machine learning algorithms, then in those cases, usually it's cheaper to just rent out some space on the cloud using like Azure or even Google Colab, which is completely free and very, very easy to use, and uh, just use that instead of buying a very expensive laptop in order to uh, do that exact same thing. Now that being said, I'm sure you didn't click on this video just for me to tell you it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go over the five dimensions that I think are particularly important when deciding on what laptop you should get for your data science career. The five major considerations in order of importance are the operating system that you're picking, the processor, the GPU, the keyboard, and the screen. The operating system processor and GPU are obviously the most important because you're gonna have a hard time changing that after you buy a laptop. Keyboard and screens are also very important, but uh, those can usually be switched out if you want to by just uh, hooking up like an external one. All right, so while I'm waiting for my bags, let me like uh, ring off what I think about all these things. So I have my notes over here. Uh, let's start off with operating system. Now, personally, you, you have a choice between Mac and Windows, and personally, I'm a Mac guy. And when you get a Mac, the uh, great thing about Macs is that they're based off the Unix operating system. And uh, that's actually the same. So Linux is what a lot of like servers in the cloud will be using, which is also based off of Unix. So you have this great compatibility between whatever code you write on your laptop and whatever you're gonna be deploying to the cloud. Now, with Windows, it's easy enough to get around that, but I thought I'd mention that anyways. Next, you have Windows. And I'd say Windows, probably the biggest advantage you have with Windows is software compatibility. So uh, a great uh, example is Power BI, for example. Uh, only works on Windows, as in like you can only like develop Power BI dashboards on a Windows computer. Altrix is another piece of software that I've used quite a bit in my analytics career. I don't use it anymore, but I used to use it quite a bit. That is only available when you are using a Windows computer. Next most important, I would say, is the processors. Now, if you're choosing a Mac, you have a choice between the M series processors, and at the time of this video, the M1 is the only one that's available right now, and the Intel-based processors. I would only pick the Intel-based processors, if I were you, if you have to run Windows on your MacBook. If that's the case, then that's really the only choice you have because Parallels, I think, is still uh, not like at uh, full power the way Intel is with the M1 processors. Now, if you're on Windows, you have the choice between AMD and Intel. And uh, of course, this could change at any given time, but currently, AMD seems to be making more power efficient for the power processors um, in the marketplace, but there are fewer laptops that have them. So do your own research and see which laptop has the uh, correct amount of power for what you need. I wouldn't cheap out too much on the processor because the better processor you get typically, the longer this laptop's going to last because uh, future more power hungry applications will be able to run on it, you know, even 10 years uh, or eight to 10 years uh, into the future. Now the next dimension we care about is GPUs. Now when it comes to GPUs, you typically have a choice between integrated graphics, AMD graphics, so AD AMD uh, Radeon and Nvidia. Integrated graphics are just the graphics that come uh, built into your CPU processor. Most of them have uh, integrated graphics these days. The only graphics I would say that are that really matter at all when you're talking about analytics is Nvidia. Because NVIDIA chips have something called CUDA cores, which are basically purpose-built cores that a lot of machine learning, specifically like neural network um, algorithms, can access in order to speed up their training. So if you know you're gonna be running tons and tons of neural networks or tons and tons of other machine learning algorithms, then maybe an NVIDIA, a laptop equipped with an NVIDIA GPU is worth your time. But I wouldn't worry too much, because again, you can just rent out space on the cloud for whenever you do do that kind of work. Otherwise, I wouldn't worry too much about the GPU. Now, the next most important thing I would talk about is the keyboard. Now, as an analytics professional, you're going to be spending a lot of time presumably writing some kind of code, either SQL code or uh, something in Excel or something in Python or R. And because of this, I always like to make sure I get laptops with keyboards that I am very happy with. So, in my opinion, um, obviously, if you're getting a Mac, you're, you know, you're stuck with Macs. But in my opinion, if you're in the Windows space, then Asus and Lenovo have some of the best laptop keyboards out there. They have a good amount of key travel, meaning the amount of... Um, space between like the top of the key and the bottom of the key press when you press down on it. And the spacing between the keys is very nice. They feel really nice. I've used a Lenovo and Asus laptops and they are by far my favorite when it comes to uh, the keyboards. All right, and finally, before we go ahead and see what laptop I got, I would look at the screen of the laptop. Again, you're gonna be like spending hours and hours staring at a screen. So you want a screen that is a combination of, uh, has a good screen resolution because you'll be looking at a lot of text. And so you wanna make sure you have something that's at least 1080p. Usually I like to say at least 1440p. And uh, then you wanna make sure that it's actually bright enough for whatever environments you're gonna be working in. So if you're gonna be working outside, then it's really important that the screen has a brightness that actually can be seen outside. So those are the five major considerations I would talk about when buying a laptop as an analytics professional. All right, so we are at Best Buy.
about to get the laptop. Alright guys, so we finally got back from Best Buy. I got my laptop over here. As you guys can probably tell, it is an ASUS um, ROG Zephyrus. I got the M16. I know it's a bit of a stupid name. For anyone that isn't aware, M16 is uh, the military name for the uh, US combat rifle. So calling a laptop an M16 is a pretty stupid name in my opinion. But the laptop itself is quite good. I had a G14 last year, but I gave it back because I wasn't very happy with the battery life. So after about another year, I was like, okay, you know what? I just need a laptop. Um, I like to game a little bit here and there, so I wanted something with a GPU in it, but also so that I could run uh, any neural networks I might want to train just on my spare time for any projects I might be working on. So that's why I got the ROG Zephyrus M16 because it has an NVIDIA GPU, which has CUDA cores that actually work well with uh, Google's TensorFlow libraries. That way we can uh, speed up the training of our machine learning libraries. And I can play some games if I really want to. It also comes with an Intel processor, which I wasn't particularly happy about. I really wanted an AMD processor, but because, um, and I'm only guessing here, but because Intel processors generally don't perform as well as AMD, their AMD counterpart parts these days, um, it was a lot cheaper than the AMD counterpart. And I kind of got this laptop not worrying too much about battery life and stuff like that, so it is an i7, I believe, which should be more than enough power for anything I need to do. If I don't have enough power over here, then I'll just spin up an Azure Cloud server and run whatever. All right, so let's get started and unbox this thing. So, if this is anything like the G14 box, then I'm expecting it to actually like reveal the laptop to me, so let's see if I can... There we go. Interesting, okay, so... Ah, there we go. As you guys can probably tell, it actually lifted the laptop up a little bit. So, it is... I got the black color. I used to have the white version of the G14, uh, which was nice, but I think I would have preferred a black one a little bit more stealth than the white ones. Wow. Oh, okay, I guess I'm not supposed to do it like that, so. Let's do that. Sweet. It's significantly smaller than whatever I expected it to be, so I mean, wow, I'm very happy with that size. And it has all these like uh, drilled in holes over here, so they're all like machined in, and there's apparently some like prismatic thing below it. So one thing I really like about the ROG Zephyrus line specifically um, is that they the laptops are quite powerful, especially for the size, but they are not like they don't like scream gamer, which is exactly what I was looking for in a laptop. Sweet. And one major problem I had with the G14 when I had it last year was this trackpad was way too small. I'm a lot happier with the size of this trackpad. This has an RTX 3050, by the way, for anyone curious. And it looks like it comes with just a couple of accessories. Yeah, just like manuals and stuff like that, and probably powerful as well. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, as you guys know, earlier I went into the video about like what laptop I think you guys should buy. At the end of the day, if you're on your analytics journey, the laptop you have doesn't really matter. But there are some things that you might want to consider when buying a laptop. I think probably the most important thing is you want something with a decent enough processor. That way you're not just like waiting for uh, algorithms to keep running. And you want to decide if you want a Mac or a PC. Again, I think if you were to ask me from a purely logical stand uh, standpoint, I think a PC is a better computer to get for analytics because it runs Power BI and it runs Tableau better and it runs Alteryx. Basically, there are analytics software tools that only work on a uh, Windows PC. So while I personally am a Mac guy, if you were to ask me what is the most logical choice for someone who works in analytics, I would probably say a PC. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It's a great way of showing the YouTube algorithm if you like the content that I'm putting out. And I hope you guys have a great day.